Hi, I'm Tracy Tadero, and I'm so glad you've joined me for the Be Courageous Summit. My intentions for this summit is to pro provide encouragement and support to help shift out of fear and uncertainty during these times of turmoil. And today we have an amazing guest, um, Julie Nee is joining us. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. Julie is a leader, a motivator, and passionate teacher of all things positivity. Heart-centered leadership and enthusiasm are her trademarks. She brings a high level of energy and passion to every engagement. Julie brings 25 years of business experience in sales, sales leadership, and marketing, including 19 years at the Hershey Company, building business, leading teams, and developing people. This experience is the foundation for connecting and engaging with clients around their real business challenges and opportunities. Julie's worked with clients across a wide variety of industries to drive positive change into their organizations. In addition to keynote speaking, Julie leads the training team at the John Gordon Company, and she is the co-creator, along with John Gordon, of the Power of Positive Leadership Training Program. Julie focuses her sessions on helping each organization, team, and individual build more positive minds, teams, and cultures. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't necessarily expecting that big bio. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So one thing I saw on your website, you are labeled as the energizer. And that's part of the reason I reached out to you is because I love your energy. And that's what everybody needs right now is just a flow of positive energy. And I know you are on big, a big on mindset and energy. And so can you explain to us what that means to you? <laughs> well, uh, mindset, I mean, first of all, I think the energy that we all bring to both ourselves and the people around us is so important because it's contagious. And so when you think about even in this virtual environment, you know, I'm looking at you and we're engaging with each other and we're still feeding energy back and forth to each other, regardless of whether we're live or not. So that idea of bringing your best energy to others because it is going to be contagious, whatever you're bringing is really important. And mindset, of course, is the way you think. And the way you think really translates into kind of the way your life is going to turn out. So if you think something is going to be fabulous, then it's much more likely to be fabulous. And if you think it's going to be horrible, then it probably is going to be horrible. So your mind has a lot more power than you may actually think. I agree. I agree. And I know mindset is big for people now. Everybody is kind of in a place of having to reevaluate and either looking at themselves as a victim through this or, oh my gosh, how is this happening? Or, oh my gosh, I'm a prisoner in my own home. And so what um, suggestions or what ways do you talk about being able to shift mindset? Well, boy, I think that's so important, especially right now. And I think one of the ways to do that is to control what you're exposing yourself to. And that goes for the news, your social media, the people. Now I get that a lot of us are quarantined, so we can't necessarily control the people that we're around, but we can control what we're listening to and watching and paying attention to in this time. Because what we are feeding ourselves with is not just nutrition in our mouths, right? We're feeding ourselves in every way. So we can sit around and watch the news, or we can binge watch Netflix all day long, or we can find ways in this time to feed ourselves with positive things. If you look for it, you will find the good. There are so many inspirational stories out there. And, and yes, Tracy, to your point, of course there are people who are complaining and draining and miserable and stuck in their houses, but language matters. And I, I saw something on social media the other day about we're being, we're safe at home instead of stuck at home. And it's just one little word shift, but it actually makes a difference. And then I saw this other really cool video last night uh, where this woman was talking about this word social distancing that we keep using, social distancing, social distancing, social distancing. And what that does is that actually removes connection. Um, so her recommendation was, let's call it physical distancing not social distancing, because here we are still socializing and still taking advantage of that need for human connection, but we're 
physically distant. So I think just changing our words around some of these things can help us start changing our minds. Those are great tools. I mean, it's definitely paying attention to what comes out of your mouth and little shifts like that, right? Or little changes can really make a difference. Um, so rolling into the whole fear topic, um, cause I know that's big for a lot of people, whether fear comes from worry or concern or how am I gonna make ends meet or, you know, anxiety, whatever that looks like. Um, I know that you talk about courage through positivity and so, you say that courage isn't the absence of fear. Explain what you mean by that. Gosh, it's so funny because I follow so many things in this space and I think we probably have a similar belief system around this. So I, I've seen a lot of teachings around this, but courage is being afraid and then just doing it anyway. And not only doing it once, but having to like keep going and keep doing it and keep doing it. And I'll give you an example. Um, several years ago, four and a half years ago or so, I had a big job with the Hershey company. I was leading a big sales team. And yet I knew that my calling was to be speaking and inspiring and motivating people. I just knew that that was my calling. And I decided to leave my big job and take the leap and do this new work. And I've been working with John Gordon. And the first year I had taken a package. So I was really lucky. So financially, it was great the first year because we had a big reorganization. And, and, and so financially, I was able to do it. And then year two, when I still wasn't making any money, <laughs> that's when I had to be more courageous than ever because that's when we were having very real financial conversations at home about how are we going to make this work and it's getting to be a little bit more struggle, more of a struggle paying the bills and oh my gosh, maybe I should go back and get a regular job again, you know, a regular job with a direct deposit and all the things, right? But I kept telling myself to stay the course and stay the course and you can do this and you can do this and you can do this. But believe me, I had imposter syndrome a million times, but then I just had to keep feeding myself with that belief and that belief and that belief. And honestly, it's the exact same thing right now because what I do now is I go out and speak and train with organizations live in groups. <laughs> and I had a fantastic year set up this year and of course corona hit and everything's canceled and so financially the thing is the same this year it is the same but I'm not down and out about it I'm really not I have a belief and an optimism that there will be some level of normalcy not the back to what it was right there will be some new level of life and we're gonna all figure it out. And in the meantime, how do I innovate and grow and learn and adapt to do whatever I can during this time? And also, I think I'm going well beyond your question, but also I would say, <laughs> find ways to serve. So one thing I've been doing is I've been doing a lot of things for free, doing a, often offering to do a webinar for a client that I had been previously nurturing that I hadn't booked yet. Let me do a free webinar for your team right now. How about if I jump online to um, energize your team before your regular weekly meeting or your regular monthly meeting or whatever. And I just have been trying to serve and I find that people just soak in the value of that, especially having someone come from the outside who has a different gift than maybe they have as a leader and just can make a little bit of inspiration for their team even if it's just for a few minutes. So I just think that makes such a big difference. That's great, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, serving, it kind of gets us outside of ourselves, right? And like, how can I help other people? Because there's always somebody worse off. There's always somebody that needs something different, and it's very powerful to be able to provide that, whatever that looks like. You know, serving looks like so many different things to everybody, and, um, but just putting yourself out there one way or another, right? Like I see these people who are making masks, you know, they're, they're sewing cloth masks for people. And one of my neighbors, it's, she's making a mask and for everyone she sells, she's donating one. And it's just so beautiful what, you know, people are tapping into these things that they would have never done before. And Oh my gosh, yes. The innovation and the creativity <laughs> that's happening right now. That, that would have never happened had we not been in this situation. I mean, there's just so much creativity. And to your point, it can be the tiniest thing. Literally, my daughter and I have been painting kindness rocks 
and placing them all around the neighborhood. And I find myself, not only is it such a huge stress reliever for me to just paint and make something pretty, and I'm not even a crafty person at all, but just the act of doing it and then starting to spread it around. And then I saw on our neighborhood mom's Facebook group, people started posting saying, oh my gosh, I love finding these pretty rocks all around the neighborhood. My kids and I go out hunting for them. And I was like, yay, you know, just, it's so little and silly, but it makes a difference. That is such a great idea. I'm going to put my kids to work now. You, know, they got you should. <laughs> I'm going to. That is such a nice thing. And like you said, just little surprises for people. Like those little things, right? Who would have thought? I had a neighbor. I was on my run um, one morning, and they posted on, along the fence on a sheet. They put, please write a note to, um, to first responders, and we'll have it delivered. And they had a bucket of pens and then a bucket that said used pens you know, sanitized pens, used pens. Love that. And pieces of paper and everybody could just write a note as they were walking on the path and doing that. I was just like, that, like here I am running and I stopped and I was like, I'm, and I was like, no, stop. Like, just do that. Cause that's going to mean something to somebody. Yeah. And, you know, even kids, even kids are making a difference now and it, it makes them feel good. So thank yeah. you for sharing your story about the rocks and that's, <laughs> you know, who knows where that will go, but, um, Anyway, so let's talk about, um, I think self-care is really crucial during this time and making sure we take care of ourselves yeah. and not just, you know, I think a lot of people think like, oh, looking beautiful and makeup and hair. And I know that's a huge part for, for some people, but I know it goes so much deeper than that. And so, you know, what can you share about um, things that you do or would recommend for people to, to practice self-care during this time? Yeah, and that one is a particularly challenging one for me. That, that is not my towering strength. I love to take care of other people. I really do. And I mean, I'm just like here to serve and I'm all about doing all the things. And yet I have found myself on more than one occasion being really, really depleted. And so what I really try to do for myself is to be my own best friend <laughs> and speak to myself like I would speak to a best friend and take care of myself like I would a best friend. So, and I honestly, I have to force myself to do it because I don't want to. So uh, when I have days where it's getting crazy and believe it or not, it, it does still get crazy even though we're at home and everything else. I'm busy, I'm doing Zooms all the time. I have projects I'm working on for, you know, to, to take our business forward and managing the kids and everything else. But sometimes I really just have to say to myself, okay, Julie, stop. Mm -hmm. And you need to go meditate or take a walk or read a book or whatever and not feel guilty about it. And I think that's a big thing for women because we, we get hung up on the shoulds. Right. I should do this and I should throw in another load of laundry and I should and I should and I should and I should and I should. But we have to just like let go of the shoulds and realize that we truly can't. I mean, that oxygen mask metaphor is probably way overdone, but it's true. Mm -hmm. We cannot take care of others if we don't take care of ourselves first. So even if you have to do it in 15 minute bursts, you know, or five minute bursts, just a quick meditation or a chapter of a book or a little online course or whatever, and for sure nature, getting outside, take a minute. I mean, the, it, the weather is gorgeous in a lot of places right now. I know you said it's really hot in Phoenix, but I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's absolutely beautiful here. So, you know, just getting outside and, and getting some fresh air makes a huge difference too. Yeah, it really does. Just getting grounded and, and connecting with nature and the energy out there. Um, so speaking of being out in nature, you know, and having those moments, um, you said something about moments lead to momentum. Elaborate on that. I love that. Yes. I used to say this with my team at Hershey all the time. And what it means is sometimes you feel stuck, right? And you don't know where to start and you don't know how to get going. And you have this big giant thing out here, whether it's a big goal or just a huge obstacle or really just feeling stuck in general. So what I mean by moments lead to momentum is you just have to start with one thing, right? So one step, one glass of water, one win on a project, one check off your to-do list, whatever it is. And it's, I mean, think about the to-do list thing. 
once, I don't know if you're like me, but I love to check things off. And so I check off one and I'm like, oh, yay, I want to check another one. And then I check another one and then I check another one. But then all of a sudden, that's what I mean. So those little moments now are the, turning into this giant snowball of goodness, right? That just keeps on going. So the little moments build into big momentum on any topic. True. Sure. True. I know for me, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a little cheat when it comes to my list because I'll have my list. And then if I get sidetracked, I'll come back and I'll write something like, oh, unloaded the dishwasher. Check. But it feels good. You know what I do? It's like, I, too. I, I did accomplish something that needed to be accomplished yeah. or send out an email. Check. You know, however little it may be, I'll just add those little wins on my list and check them off because it's a sense of accomplishment. So. Absolutely. And sometimes if you're feeling kind of stuck and you're, I call it shuffling paper. Sometimes I'm sitting at my desk and I don't feel like I'm accomplishing a lot and I'm just kind of shuffling paper. Sometimes, sometimes I just force myself to say, okay, you have to do these three things and then you can take a walk. You know, there's some kind of reward. So three yeah. checks and then you get a walk. It does. It does make a difference. There's just yeah. a sense of accomplishment that's so satisfying. Um, so I guess since this, the topic of our, our um, summit is be courageous, you know, any final words of encouragement or support for our viewers um, to, you know, support them in being courageous during this time before things kind of shift back into whatever the new normal is? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think I would say when you are feeling like you can't do the thing, you want to do something and you want to be courageous and you want to do it, but you keep saying to yourself, well, I can't, or who am I to do that? Or it's too hard, or I'm so scared, back to the fear piece. I would advise you to look for evidence as to when you have done something similar in the past. And so you can prove to your brain and remind your brain, oh yeah, you know what, last year, I was going through a similar thing and I overcame that. So who's to say that I can't overcome this? And so once you give yourself some evidence that you can do it, then you're like, huh, okay, maybe I can. And honestly, for me this time, I last year I was going through a breast cancer experience during this time. And then this year, I was thinking about, wow, this is going to be my comeback year and my business is going to be great. It's going to be so awesome. And then Corona. And yet this year, it's not hitting me as much as it hit me last year because I know I got through that. So I know that I'm strong enough and I'm capable enough and I'm innovative enough to find a way to get through it this year. So remind yourself that you have done this before and you have gotten through all of your hardest days in the past. So you can do it again. Brilliant. I love that. And I mean, for me, even going back to, you know, the market crash of 2008, that was so like life shattering for so many people. And just like, I remember being in it going like, oh my God, like, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? We're never going to get out of this. We will get out of this. This will end and we will all be okay. Right. We will all be okay. And so I think that for if people need something, at least in the U.S., that they can relate to, we all remember that. That was a painful time yeah. and more painful for a lot of people than, you know, some others. And so that's a great um, comparison or, you know, to just go back to that moment and like, well, we never thought we'd get through that, but we did. We did. Exactly. And exactly. We will, we will continue on. So, um thank you for your amazing words of wisdom and your experiences and sharing all of this. And, you know, just for our audience, Julie's got a fantastic free gift that she's offering um, once this interview goes live and you can find out more information. I'll let Julie, Julie tell you about it real quick. Yes, we are going to share a, I am going to share a Courage Through Positivity Action Plan that will be shared via my website and also the links that will be included in the emails that go out with the summit. So hope you guys are interested in downloading that. And again, look forward to keeping the conversation open and engaging with anyone who wants to engage after this. Perfect. And that sounds like a great tool to kind of help people 
work through some some things and move them in a positive direction. So I appreciate your positive energy and your time and this is so great. And you know, from all the viewers, thank you. And um, anyways, I just want to say to everybody in the meantime, be courageous and we are signing off with love and light. Thank, thank you, you, Tracy. Thanks.